Hello, Wonder Hussy here in the middle of Nevada. Huh, you probably thought I was gonna say the middle of nowhere. Well, guess what? I'm in both the middle of Nevada and the middle of nowhere. It's a beautiful mm, mid-May spring day in the mountains. Oh gosh, sort of, well, in the middle of Nevada. I don't know how else to describe it. I'm sort of north of US 6 in between Ely and Duckwater. And I'm out for a beautiful day of off-roading and adventuring with some friends. These are my friends, Paula. Paula's been in one of my videos before. Hi. You might you might remember Paula. I'm actually staying at Paula's house. She moved, she just moved up here. And then this is Jackson. Hello. Hi Jackson. Thank you for coming with us. Jackson Hello. knows everything about this area, and he's our tour guide today. Hi. Okay, so the first stop we're at right now, what is this? It's not Ellison. We're going. Yeah. We're, we're going to a place called Ellison. Yeah. Ellison Guard Ellison Station. Ellison and then Washburn up ahead. Okay, so Washburn we're going to a Ellison Guard Station and then a place called Washburn. But first, we stopped at this really cool old stone ruin, and we don't know what this is. At first, Jackson thought this was Ellison, but it's just some really cool old stone ruin that some old timer built. Some kind of shelter. I mean, look at that. That's pretty neat. That wall. And there was a like a trail register over here, but unfortunately, I don't think there's any information left in here anymore. It's been many years <laughs> since anybody came and oh yeah, it's been a while since anybody did anything with this trail register. So yeah, unfortunately no information about what this lonely little stone fortress shelter. I mean, it's pretty big. You can see somebody spent a lot of time stacking these rocks up. So I don't know, maybe it was somebody's house. Could have been a sheep corral, could have been an old trading post. Who knows? Oh wow, Jackson says there's a waterfall over here. I guess they got a, a ton of, of uh, snow this winter and the snow's all melting and that's why there's so much beautiful greenery everywhere and apparently this waterfall. Uh oh, here's Frank, that's Paula's dog Frank. Hi Frank! It, yeah, I heard you say there's a waterfall. Wow, that is a waterfall, dang. I bet that's nice cold water. Did you put your hand in? It's cold. I bet it's cold. I can't let the kids get one on me. I gotta put my hand in the waterfall too. Woo! That is ice cold snow melt. Feels amazing. Back up the hill, Paula. Gotta get back to the cars and on to the next destination, which I guess is gonna be this mysterious Ellison station. I think it was a stagecoach stop. There was a stagecoach that came through this area. I guess taking people from Salt Lake City to Reno. And there's a bunch of these really cool old stone stage stops in this area. Matter of fact, I think I went to one with Paula about a year ago. If you remember, Paula was in a video I made called Nevada Magic. And it was kind of like this. We just drove around all day looking at cool stuff. We went to a hot spring, we went to a stage stop. And who knows what we'll find today, especially with Jackson as our tour guide. He knows all the cool stuff and he's friggin' adorable. Okay, back in the car, on to the next destination. Jackson's riding with me because he's navigating. I don't have to use GPS. You got your atlas though, right? Yep. Yeah, he, he's armed with an atlas and he knows how to read it and he knows how to use it. How old are you, Jackson? Uh, 11 and a half. 11 and a half, but like this is one of the smartest, oh, maybe the smartest 11 and a half year old I've ever met. Well, you're almost 12 though. Yeah. His birthday is coming up in two months. Oh my gosh, we just had to stop for a minute because this landscape is so freaking beautiful. It looks like we're in the Swiss Alps. Looks like a golf course. I know, that's so much, I guess there's not normally this much grass here, so Paula says it looks like a golf course. Look at this. I mean, this is Nevada, y'all. You know, I've said that before. Most people, when they think of Nevada, they think of really dry deserts, and there's plenty of that down south, but guess what? There's also plenty of this. I mean, look at this. Look at the sky, blue sky, white fluffy clouds. You're so lucky you guys live here. Yeah, it's pretty cool here. And you've never lived anywhere else. This is all you know. Yep, this is... <laughs> don't ever move anywhere else. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. You can make tea out of pine needles? Yep. Pine needles, dandelions, oh. a bunch of other stuff. 
Should have brought my plant book. Oh, you have a plant book. Yep, for wild edibles in the back. Oh, cool. Uh, Jackson just checked the atlas, and the rock wall that we were just at was called Washburn. So now we know what. I guess it was just like a little settlement. Huh. Yep. Next stop, though, is this Ellison. Ellison Station. We're about right here. Oh, okay. And so we're like, mm, maybe five miles. Oh, yeah. Okay, cool. Oh, golly, I don't know. We're at this Ellison Station where it's supposed to be, and there's really nothing here. I mean, there's a picnic table. Actually, that's a very cool picnic table. It's all made out of logs. Look at that. Oh, yeah, that's actually a real cool Yeah, but uh, I don't know. I mean, and a really amazing fire pit. Look at that fire pit. You could have a really nice campfire there and camp here, but golly, I don't see any stagecoach station. I don't know. What do you think, Paula? Is this it? has to be because this is where it's supposed to be okay well since there wasn't really anything at ellison we're gonna keep going to a sounds like a really cool place called current jackson said there's a bunch of neat stuff up there so let's get back in the car and keep driving and it's known for its current berries that's why it's called current oh it's called current because there's current berries that grow yep, up there it's c-u-r-r-a-n-t not c-u-r-r-e E -N -T. Oh, not like current affairs, but current the berry. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you know what? I know some women who came up here and got currants in the summer and made cookies with them, and they were really good. It's kind of like raisins. They do. They're really good. It's too early right now for them, though, huh? Yeah, it's, it's in the fall and the summer. Okay, well, maybe I'll come back. Uh oh, water crossing. Jackson went ahead to guide me. What do you think about this, Paula? Yeah. Well, I don't think it'll be, it won't be a problem at all for me. And I, I mean, it's just up to you. Oh, Jackson's gonna get a stick and measure how deep it is. Smart kid. Oh, that's deep. No, yeah. Yikes, I don't know. Good thing you measured that. I would have gone that way. Yeah, we should all throw rocks in. Good idea. Whew, okay, well, I made it. Paula, I think, is a little bit nervous. But Jackson's going to guide her through. Here, pull forward a little Pull bit. forward more. Okay, boss. I'm going to go forward, give Paula plenty of room. Now let's check on Paula's progress. Oh, gosh. I would not want to be her right now. I feel like that's, a, that's an F-150. She's probably okay. she got decent clearance. Here she goes. Look, Jackson guiding her through the obstacles. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> oh, cute. Yay, Paula! That was expert level. Good job, Paula. Thank you, Jackson. That was great guidance. We appreciate it. Yeah, Ford. What'd you say? Ford Strong. Are you trying to get sponsored by Ford? Sure. <laughs> Okay, after all that, we decided it was time to stop for lunch. So we're gonna stop and take a little break. Jackson scouted this nice little flat spot here by the creek. Looks like somebody camped here at some point. A little firing. It's very swiftly moving creek. I mean, that's that creek we just crossed. Look at that, there's another waterfall. Wow, there is a lot of snow melt coming down here. Do you have hair on your chest now, Paula? <laughs> yeah, well, like you said, it's built forward tough. It's a F-150, that's a good truck. You got clearance. Yep. This has got a little mud on it now. That's fine. So do I. Part of living here. Mud makes you smoke. It's like gravity the mud. Like, that's how you learn. That's how you learn. Exactly. Obstacles are learning experiences. Yes, yes they're opportunities. Yeah, so we all just uh, <laughs> learned something. Okay, so how far is the highway? Uh-oh. Are you concerned, Paula? Um, hello. <laughs> all right, well, Jackson <laughs> says we can't go to Current Ghost Town after all because... It's already so muddy and the roads are pretty screwy. So he decided just then we're going to let Jackson make an executive decision that current is, it'll just be too much. So instead, we're just going to stop here and have lunch and then uh, go check out whatever else he wants to show us. <laughs> Paul is nervous. <laughs> well, might as well enjoy this lunch. It might be our last meal. 
Frank's not nervous at all. Look at Frank. Frank's happy. Is that good, Frank? <laughs> Uh-oh. The road just got real bad. I don't know. I could do it with no problem, but yeah, it'd be hard for her. She'd have to go like right here. And, oh my gosh, it would just be sketchy. Well, you never know until you go and find out. Yep. Paula looks nervous. Oh, wow. Yeah, you don't want to do this. It's just dicey, man. And then like you straddle it all the way till there and then there's that rock. What do you do there? You can move that big rock. Oh, okay. Well, let me get my shovel. Uh -huh. Jackson thinks he can fix this with a shovel. Let's see. Okay. What are we doing? Yeah. We're getting rocks and filling in. Okay, I think we built the road up enough. Here's where all our road work comes to the test. Nice! Wow, look at that. She made short work of it. <laughs> She's doing better than I did. Paula, that was the best. That was teamwork though. You know, it was your road building advice. All of our road building skills. Paula, you've probably driven worse roads than that in the Bay Area. Oh, that's true. Yeah, I mean, at least there wasn't any traffic. Is your chest hairy now? Yeah, it's, it's like sprouting. Oh, good. Okay, good job, though. Really, I mean, very, see, this truck is very capable. If you know what you're doing. Frank's still alive back there. Yep, see, here he is. Yeah, good. Oh, I see. So there's the current creek ghost town. So we would have to go 12 miles that way. Well, if the roads are as bad as they've been, probably not. <laughs> right, Paula? Paula's like me, like she hates to give up. She really wants to go to that ghost town. <laughs> but uh, Jackson, he's saying, well, it's already, I think it's almost two o'clock. We don't really have that much time. So now we have to decide where we're gonna go next. Wow, look at this. Jackson spotted this little spring bubbling right out of the ground. And then you just drank out of it, right? Yep. And how was it? Just like snow. So it was good? Yep. So I should drink some? Yeah, you should try. Okay. Don't drink too much of it, though. Oh, okay. I'll just take a sip. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's good. Tastes like snow. <laughs> and clean snow, too. All right. No, no snow for you, Paula? No, I'm going to okay. pass on the snow. <laughs> Yeah, Paula decided to leave her truck at the bottom of this road. We're all in my rig now. We're going, we got one last location we're going to hit. And this time, by golly, there'd better be a ghost town. Okay. We went a little farther up the road. And here I was told there will be some kind of ghost town. Okay, so first let's go check out the spring. This is why there was a mine camp up here in the first place. Gotta have water for a bunch of people to live and I guess to mill whatever they were mining. You need water for that too, don't you? Oh, look at this, cute. Life-giving water. This right here would keep you alive and if you were really dying of thirst, you'd be happy to drink out of that. Well, Frank's happy to drink out of it. <laughs> Yum. Okay, Jackson says there's some buildings over this way. Let's go check them out. Oh goodness, look at this. It's like a basement of an old building. Oh my goodness, look at that. Is that a root cellar? Oh, the root cellar maybe, yeah. Holy cow, and then there's an old, really old stove down in it. Wow, this went down deep though. Yeah, like a root cellar or a vault or something. Maybe this is where they kept all the silver they were mining. Yeah. And then what was this, like the doorway? Gosh, yeah, that thing is set into the ground pretty deep, whatever it was. And go inside this old building. Oh, look at this. All these brick walls still standing. And the old stove. Still hanging on. I mean, look at this. This old enamel. Still in there. Like, that's wild. Oh, gosh. Yeah, look. There's all kinds of stuff hidden in the sagebrush up here. Wow, really old enamel pot, I guess. Bowl. Old refrigerator. Is that what that was? I guess so with a wooden frame set in the back of it? Did they used to build refrigerators out of wood? Here's the old trash heap. 
Mm, can't quite make it out. Oh, a little piece of a fancy plate. Prince Albert tobacco in a can. This is Elk's cat, is that what you're saying? Yep, or maybe it's a berry, I can't tell. Oh, well, a dingleberry or a berry, one or the other. <laughs> No, I bet that's Elk's cat. Look at that. Yeah, that's Elk's cat. Jackson, you're so smart. You know so much. But you said you go to a school that only has four kids. Is that it? Yep. Four kids at your whole school. Yep, that's all. Wow, that's wild. But so you just like to read. You read a lot on your own? Yeah, I read a lot on my own. Good for you. I wonder what they were mining up here. Everything's like this white stuff. Yeah, pure white. It's kind of chalky. Golly, what do you suppose this was? Oh, is that the claim? Look and see if anyone's name is in it. Yeah. Oh, look at that. It's secret mine. So secret it's mine. Secret mine. Okay. Yeah. So we're at a secret mine. Well. Oh, we found the secret mine. Congratulations, Yay. everybody. Yay. How about that? We found the secret spring and the secret mine. Never did get to the ghost town, but that's okay. We had a great day. We learned a lot. We earned our off-roading stripes. We learned how to drive it. And now we're going home yeah. for dinner. <laughs> Dinner in the hot spring. Dinner at, oh, by the way, there's a hot spring nearby, but I can't shoot footage at it. But I'm going to go soak in the hot spring and enjoy dinner. Thanks for guiding us, Jackson. We appreciate yeah, you. Jackson plans on starting his own YouTube channel in the future. So if he does, what would you call it? Do you know? I don't know. He hasn't figured it out yet, but it'll be cool because he does all kinds of outdoorsy stuff. And he's just so personable. Paula, what about you? A YouTube channel for you? No. No? <laughs> okay. Well... Paula's gonna be making dinner, and that's yeah. enough to be thankful for. There you go. Yes. Yeah. And you will be probably on my YouTube channel. Yay! Well, needless to say, I never did end up soaking in a hot spring, and Paula didn't even make the dinner she was planning to make, which was a big, fat, juicy rack of ribs. Because unfortunately, right after I finished shooting that video, I finally got stuck. Now I know I've already talked about this in another vlog, but I'm gonna tell the story again because, well, you've just watched the whole backstory leading up to what happened. So Paula, Jackson, and I were driving along back down out of the mountains so that Paula could pick up her truck, which she left parked at the base, and then we could all drive home and she could cook up them ribs and we were gonna invite this trapper over for dinner. Okay, there's a, a BLM, or I guess a state of Nevada trapper. He works for the state of Nevada trapping coyotes, mountain lions, and other nuisance animals that bother the livestock up there. So this dude gets paid to camp out and trap wild animals. I didn't even know that was a job in this modern day and age. I think it's pretty interesting. So I wanted to meet that guy. Paula invited him over for dinner. We were headed down the mountain to go get ready for that, but we were running a little bit late. And so Paula thought, well, we should probably let Trapper know that we're running a little bit late. Well, Jackson was the only one of us three who had cell signal because he had AT&T. You remember, he's the smartest 11 year old I ever met. And while he was born and raised in that area, he knew that Verizon was no good at all up there. Paula hasn't learned that lesson yet, but I'm sure she will. Anyway, Jackson was the only one with cell signal. So he was trying to text Trapper and let him know, but the road was real bumpy and it was hard for him to text and so he goes hey just stop for a minute so i stopped unfortunately i stopped in a muddy patch and i got stuck and i mean really stuck my back uh right wheel was just digging into that soft ooey gooey mud and it was just getting worse and worse like everything i tried you know you try to go back a little bit and then go forward like it was just getting worse and you know so now you've seen how jackson is jackson knows a bit about off-roading for such a young kid so you know he we tried putting some sticks under the wheel and some rocks and you know I was just digging in deeper and deeper to the point where it looked like I was going to get high centered on the mud so Paula and Jackson both thought it would be a better idea if we just called someone for help because apparently up in that neck of the woods well it's very rural uh, there's not a ton of people living up there but they all kind of know each other and folks look out for each other so it wouldn't be an issue for somebody to come there's a lot of a lot of folks out there with big old trucks and big old chains and it ain't no thing at all to come pull out a neighbor in need now i even though i live in the middle of nowhere now i'm originally from the city so i really hate asking people for help you know i just want to do it myself like i don't know jackson can we just stack more rocks under there? I've got recovery tracks, like we can figure this out. Well, he seemed to think it would just be better if we called for help. So that's exactly 
what we did, we had to use Jackson's phone because he was the only one with cell signal, called the trapper to see if the trapper could come tow us out. But unfortunately, the trapper wasn't driving his pickup truck. I think he was in his wife's car or something. So he took the call and he said, don't worry, I'll find some, uh, I'll find somebody with a truck. We'll come get you. Well, unfortunately, the person that he found to come get us happened to be the one lady in the entire region who really didn't like me. Okay, I never met this woman, but apparently she'd seen one of my YouTube videos where I went to one of the local hot springs that I guess was near her family's homestead. And I don't know, she just didn't like the fact that it was getting publicized. And now all these people are going to come out there and go to the hot spring. Even though, you know, if you've been watching my channel for a while, I do pride myself uh, on the fact that I take pretty big pains to obscure and obfuscate the locations of these places. Because I understand how it is. Lots of people don't want their hot spring or their cabin getting blown up on social media. Next thing you know, everybody shows up and, you know, trashes the place, vandalizes it. So I generally don't say where I am. I usually just say, oh, I'm out in the middle of nowhere. And in that particular video, I really did stay pretty vague on the details. But apparently she had seen the video. She wasn't happy with it. And I knew all of this because she happened to be friends with Paula. Okay, Paula just moved out there from the big city. Uh, that's right, Paula used to live in the San Francisco Bay Area, but she decided she wanted to go move out to the middle of nowhere, Nevada. And so, you know, when you move out to a new area, you do as many community events as you can, try to meet the local people. And so she did. She was at a local event and she met this woman who's kind of like, <laughs> in my other video, I called her like the boss lady of the region. And she really does sound like a boss lady. Like she runs search and rescue. She runs the local church. Like she's kind of just a pillar of the community and a no nonsense woman who knows how to get stuff done. Unfortunately, yeah, she doesn't, doesn't like me, so that's the last person I would have called for help. Unfortunately, that's exactly who the Trapper called. And when I found out that's who Trapper had called and that's who was coming to dig us out of this mess, I was, well, humiliated is a pretty apt word. I was, I mean, it was like the, my most ignominious moment. You know, here I am stuck in the mud, I'm kind of stressed out. I'm desperate and I need help. And the only person that was available to come help me is somebody who doesn't like me. So I got real nervous when they told me that like, oh yeah, uh, well, Trapper says uh, this woman is coming to pull us out. Oh brother, uh, what am I going to do? And so Paula and Jackson, they were both very helpful. They go, well, take off, take off your sunglasses. Okay. Take off my sunglasses. Take off your hat. Okay. I took off my hat. Take off your hoodie. I had a hoodie on that had this logo. Well, it was cold. I didn't want to take my hoodie off. So I turned the hoodie inside out, put that on, took off my hat. I didn't have any makeup on. So I just put my hair up on my head. I, they go, put some mud on your face. <laughs> so I put some mud on my face to try to disguise myself, you know, thinking, Maybe she won't recognize me. She didn't know it was me. She thought it was just Paula and Jackson that were stuck in the mud with some friend. So when this truck finally arrived, I just kind of kept my head down. Didn't make eye contact, but it was. It was her and her husband and the trapper. They all three showed up. I had my toe strap ready and they hooked me up and they, they yanked me out in only a few minutes. It really didn't take much time. And so everything was okay. They left, we all got back in the car and went back to Paula's house. Well, by that time, it was too late in the day for her to make ribs. It was too late in the day for me to go to the hot spring. So Paula just heated up some leftovers and me and Paula and Jackson and the trapper and the trapper's wife all had a really nice dinner together. But as we were sitting down to eat, the trapper goes, Ooh, I think I'm in trouble. Well, what do you mean? Uh, I didn't realize I wasn't supposed to tell boss lady who you were. And I did. Oh dear. That means that that boss lady knew exactly who she was going to rescue the entire time. You know, here I am trying to disguise myself, putting mud on my face, keeping my eyes down. She knew all along exactly who she was going to tow out. And if it was me, well, unfortunately, I would probably have a little bit of schadenfreude and I'd be like, oh, ho! Wonder hussy needs towing out, huh? Wonder hussy needs my help, huh? Well, this woman didn't do anything like that. She was pure class. And apparently that's just the way it is out there in the country. These rural folk, they, they understand that life is tough and they, you know, they help you, no questions asked, even if you're apparently 
an enemy. So, long story short, <laughs> she knew all along, she just didn't say anything. Uh, she had the grace, is how I said in my last video, she had the grace not to bring it up at all, and I give her massive kudos for that. Like, what a cool lady. And I, you know, I did, even though I kept my eyes down, I kind of like looked at her out of the side, side eye, and she looked like a boss. Like, she was one of those women who just, you know, gets things done. So anyway, I mentioned this in a video, uh, oh gosh, right after the event, uh, I just kind of told the story and apparently I think that lady saw the video or her daughter saw it and sent it to her or something. Anyway, I think she kind of came around and she expressed willingness to meet with me. So even after that whole debacle of a day, I am planning to go back and visit my friend Paula again and visit my friend Jackson again. And with any luck, well, I just might make one more friend in the area. I certainly hope that's the case because it's a beautiful area and there's some really cool people there. And I would sure like to spend more time up there. Just gotta be careful in the mud.